Hi guys, Reaper here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm super stoked and excited to bring you this video. This is of course to talk about the new scanning and exploration update that's soon to come. So on the content creator channel we've had some notes released which I'm going to do my absolute best to explain. However, even for me it's taken me pretty much all of yesterday to somewhat wrap my tiny little brain around this. <laughs> it's pretty, yeah, pretty complicated but once you get the knack of it and and once you actually play around with this in game I'm sure the pieces will fall into place much much faster so don't be afraid if it sounds complicated and the explanation in the notes are somewhat going over your head uh, fear not when you get to play with these things in game things will certainly start to make a lot more sense you're either able to digest and read information and take it all in and understand what to do or you need to physically play around with it like me and yeah learn that way anyway without further ado let's get on with this and go through the notes so what is resonance simulation in the original eve universe the process of probe scanning was to use probes to analyze specific areas increasing the intensity of the probes by continually narrowing their detection range and thus eventually locating different celestials, ships and other objects. During the supernova event, the parallel universe Echoes emerged. The supernova also produced a large number of special neutrinos. Shortly thereafter, people in the parallel universe discovered a special resonance effect that occurs when such neutrinos pass through different objects, an effect that can be recognized as a new kind of signal. This is a super sciencey way to say that Echoes is not part of the EVE online universe, instead it's a parallel universe. Nothing wrong with that, in fact I really like it, that is probably exciting many people's inner nerds. The source of the signal is very diverse, it can come from a celestial or a ship. It occurs as long as such neutrinos exist. Since then, the Concord, in conjunction with the Four Empires and the Sisters, the Servant Sisters of Eve, that is, has been analysing this signal and has named it the Neutrino Resonance Wave, or NRW for short. Later, analysis of the signal showed that neutrino resonances from different sources have different oscillation characteristics. What that means is they have a different wave band and a different pattern. And the distance decay effect is very insignificant, so an instrument was built to record and display the analysis of the received signal. That instrument is the resonance simulator. So leading on from that, how do we actually make use of the resonance simulation? So there are two types of resonance simulators developed so far, the wide area resonance simulator and the narrow area resonance simulator. These two instruments work using the same principle, but the narrow area resonance simulator is only developed for the signal waves emitted by existing ships or buildings. So that's gonna be physically scanning down buildings inside of anomalies or ship ships by the category or type or or whatever it is the signal waves emitted by ships and buildings are more similar and closer in frequency range and are more different from those emitted by celestials etc so the narrow end resonance simulator can only detect the signal waves emitted by buildings or ships and can make specific verdicts about them, such as determining the type of ships, etc. The wide area resonance simulator, however, is built for analyzing possible beacon signals under different astronomical conditions and has a wider acceptance range, but the accuracy of the analysis will be slightly less than that of the narrow area resonance simulator. So I feel like we've said a lot of the same words there over and over again. But effectively, this means that there's a shorter band frequency scanner that will detect specific ships and items, buildings inside anomalies. And then there's a far wider scanning resonance simulator, which will be able to scan, let's say, for example, a whole system to find anomalies in specific parts of space in New Eden. And for the objects that have been analyzed so far, 
the researchers have calculated the property of source radius based on the strength of the signal at the time it was scanned. So the larger the source radius, the stronger the signal wave emitted. So yeah, in a roundabout way, <laughs> I think that that is um, talking about the radius of the ship slash building to try and work out what it is, what the size is, etc. But that isn't overly straightforward to dissect and take from that what you will. We'll find out when it goes live. Also in the notes are some questions and answers. So question number one. How does the scan work from a PVE perspective? And what kind of signal can be detected? Interesting. So the answer to that one was resonance simulation for PVE can probe many different signals such as dead space. You will need to have the wide area resonance simulator fitted and by activating this module in outer space you will receive reports on anomalous astronomical signals from different regions of the current galaxy after a period of time after the scan players can tap the notice on the screen to check the scan reports and analysis i'm not entirely sure whether that's region wide or system wide however if you're able to scan an entire system to find all of the scouts inquisitors and dead spaces that's really really awesome hopefully it, the kind of dead spaces are going to still spawn normally this is just a locational indicator as to where they are really happy about that thumbs up and now on to the good question how does the scan work in pvp and how can i get a signal so resonance simulator for pvp can only scan player ships and structures first you have to fit the narrow area resonance simulator or nars Activate the module in outer space to retrieve different signal reports and show the ship in the current system after a short period of time. Later, you can tap the notice on the screen and check the scan report and analysis. So it's not really a directional scan as such. It's more being able to detect which type of ship is at what signal, I believe. We'll find that out as well. From what I gather, if you're able to detect what type of ship is in which anomaly before you go in or, you know, at which particular beacon, then, yeah, that's only a positive. Great stuff. Okay, let's find out a little on the detailed scanning process. When you activate the module, different signal waves can be received and all detected signals can be displayed. So... The wave seen in the next screen will be the overlay of possible anomalous beacon or ship waveforms and noise from other celestials such as stars or planets. Since the module itself cannot filter all possible noises, you will need to correctly select the noise and filter it. If the noises are successfully filtered, the module can then perform a data simulation of the noiseless signal wave with the data already available to derive the information behind the signal wave. If you think that's pretty complicated, I'm with you. Let's do the next part and see before we explain. It then reads on, for example, and mind you, I'm very glad they've given an example here as they lost me at hello in the last paragraph. When using the wide area resonance simulator, there are five possible noises, and after the capsuleer eliminates two of the noise waves that interfere with the analysis, the module will automatically perform a simulation that gives an analysis of the noiseless signal waves. The module will go through a significant number of calculations each time it performs a noise exclusion or unexclusion. So when the cumulative operation require, uh, requests more calculations than the module can compute, you will have to wait for the module to recover from previous requests before another analysis. So possibly in a much simpler way to explain this without all the uh, jargon as such is to say that there's different patterns that you have to work out which pattern correlates to which type of anomaly or planet or asteroid belt, whatever that might be. And also at the end, it mentions about a cumulative operation request. I mean, that's literally just translating to a cooldown. So you'll probably only be able to scan every so often, every hour. 12 hours whatever that might be okay so what resonance simulation will bring to the game let's find out in question form so the first question is why did you change the dead space signature to the new scanning system and the answer is 
As the most advanced anomaly, Dead Space is supposed to be harder to discover. We always plan to make Dead Space a resonance simulation exclusive. If you find the amount of anomalies is below par, just give resonance simulation a try. It will show you the hidden anomalies. So I think that's saying that, you know, Dead Spaces pop up and spawn on their own at the moment. Perhaps they intended for that to happen a bit differently. It's not entirely clear from this. We will be finding out. Hopefully it means you'll be able to scan down the Dead Spaces using the scanning techniques, uh, resonance, and also you'll be able to find them randomly in space. But that's to be confirmed. The new Nilus space, why did you make it scan exclusive? According to research, some unstable areas beyond the main universe called Nilla space are linked to the main universe through unstable areas. The gateways to these spaces absorb other particles, and their energy keeps the space beyond the main universe in existence for a short time. During that energy transformation, only neutrino resonance will continue to propagate as residual information in the main universe, emanating information about the gateways everywhere. I can't really explain much about this, but it sounds sciencey. it sounds cool, and I look forward to it. <laughs> Allowing scan in low sec will affect the current playing pattern. Why did you do that? Hmm. In the low security areas in EVE games, players are only protected by Concord or the four empires when they are close to Stargates. The other places are supposed to be very dangerous. We fixed the low set gate camp issue because we want to prevent players from being destroyed when auto-piloting under the protection of Stargate cannons. Despite that, the current low sec environment is too safe. We want these areas to actually be low security. I'm not going to comment on that. Too many people are too opinionated, but there's the information and there you go. Next topic, how to prevent yourself from being detected. So how do you stop yourself from being scanned or let's find out. So question, what should I do to prevent my ship from being detected in low sec and null sec? What should I do if I am detected? If you are scouting and don't want to be detected, you can choose a covert op ship fitted with a stealth with stealth modules to prevent your ship from being detected. Ships with lower source radius also help you stay undiscovered. We will also be introducing some new defensive modules that can lower your ship's source radius. So a source radius is the thing that enables you to be scanned. The lower the source radius, the harder you are to find, and covert op ships are better at doing this. And of course, if you're jumping around Nullsec and you want to evade uh, gate camps and people in general, you would use the Covert Ops cloaking device. Pretty straightforward. Will I get any notice if I'm detected? If the scanner's detection radius is less than or equal to the source radius of the scan ship, the scan ship will receive no notice. If the scanner's detection radius is larger than or equal to the source radius of the scan ship, the scan ship will receive a notice like when it is attacked. Again, don't need to read into that too much. That's pretty straightforward. Sounds pretty good. If you're still with me, that's awesome. The final part here, what should I do if I'm playing the storyline missions in low sec and don't want to be detected? What should I do if I am detected? When playing storyline missions, if you don't want to be detected, you should always keep an eye on the local player list. If there are multiple players online, a timely retreat is your best option. So mission runners are no longer safe. And yeah, that is going to mean a lot more PvP kills, a lot more people fighting in low sec. There's going to be some juicy kills on offer. This is going to make lots and lots and lots of PvP players extremely happy as the uh, ratters out there can now be hunted so yes i think that's going to tick a lot of people's boxes and that's probably the best part of this whole update i am proper chuffed about that yeah chuffed to bits it then goes on to talk about warp stabilizing modules to prevent interference etc etc during the mission you can prioritize defeating enemies and anti-warp abilities and try to get out and stuff like that and yada 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 goes on and on but effectively if you are tackled you're buggered and if you're not paying attention you're buggered and there's going to be a lot of yarring going on with a lot of uh, probably tasty ships being taken out running uh, storyline missions. And uh, yeah, I can imagine a lot of the ratters are going to probably need to move to Nullsec, which is good. And this is, generally speaking, going to spice up the game altogether. So hooray for that. And 
yeah, hats off to the devs. I'm really looking forward to this patch. I hope you guys are too. I'm going to leave you now with a few screenshots and let you have a look at those. Make of them what you will. Thank you for watching. Murder on goal with the fun now.